Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will be making this vintage lace angel wall hanging. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. The first thing that I want to say about your wall hanging angel is that you do not need a piece of heirloom petticoat or something to make it from. This is a skirt from American Eagle Outfitters that I got at the thrift store. It's just white and it's layers of eyelet. It has some stains on it, but I can easily cut around that. Here is something very similar. It uh, still has a tag on it, $4.99 from Goodwill. And this is really cute. This little trim is adorable. It has two layers and um, this would be great. Here's an eyelet dress. It has a beautiful flounce on the bottom. It's also made of eyelet. This would be a great angel. And finally, I have this, which is also from the thrift store, originally from Free People. It looks like it was kind of a mashup of a knit t-shirt and some horrible trim. And then this, which kind of looks like heirloom sewing, but it's made in India. When you turn it over on the back, you can see that it was just machine manufactured with not very high quality lace, but it's still really pretty. I think this might be the one I actually use. So I am going to um, cut the, oh, there's a stain. I'm gonna cut the skirt from the top. I'm gonna press it. And I'm going to cut, hmm, this is kind of long. I'll probably cut it about here, maybe about 20 inches. I think 20 inches is about the right length. So I'll be back with a piece of this skirt um, and ready to show you how to make your wall hanging angel. This is the section, um, <laughs> from the skirt, from the dress. Uh, this is all I could cut between the seams and the stains. I wanted to get a nice fresh piece of this and this is the best I could do. It is 22 inches long. I'm not sure if I'll use the entire length. And at the top, it's 14 inches at the top. And then at the bottom, it's significantly longer because of all the gathering. I have already prepared a one and a quarter inch ball knob. Um, I've already created a face. Of course, you can find this on my Focus on Faces video and the face is ready to go. And then I also have this three quarters tall by five eighths of an inch um, on the top spool. This is just a wooden spool and I'm gonna glue this to the underside of the head to create a neck, so right here. I'm just using hot glue. You can also use wood glue. And then I have some six inch wide tool. Now my dress is 22 inches long. So I'm gonna cut um, three pieces of the six inch wide tool. I'm gonna cut them about 45 inches long. So I have three pieces of tool. It might be a little bit longer than 45 to be honest. So I'll find the center of each length of tool. So right here is, it doesn't have to be perfect. And this is not my usual <laughs> technique, believe me. It took me a while to realize that it really could be this simple. I'm gonna spread some glue right here. And then the center of the tool, I'm gonna to press into that glue. And then for the other two pieces, the same way. I'll fold this length in half and then the half right at the center. I'm going to press into this glue on the spool. And this is for piece number three. Pressed into the tool. It doesn't matter if it's all secure because now we're going to tie it. Now I'll pull a nice long piece of quilting thread and 
and I'll double it over. And then I'm just going to wrap and tie this right around this spool. We'll wrap it nice and tight, maybe three times. That's just, yeah, three times, okay. Right in the center, and then I'll tie it off securely into a nice strong knot. And then I'll add just a little bit of glue there. Then I'll fold these pieces down. The three pieces were up and now they're folded down. So here's the start. The head, the neck, and the three long folded over pieces of tulle that are tied off with a double strand of quilting thread. Now I'll find my, my skirt, my dress here, and I'm going to fold it right sides together and stitch up the side here. I'm going to pin and stitch. I sewed this up, but I can tell now that the proportions are a little bit off. So I'm going to cut about half, half of this little section. So that's maybe like four or five inches off. And I think I'm going to be happier with that. This is going to be better, I can tell. Now I'll put a double strand of quilting thread on my needle, and I'm gonna gather up the top to fit around the angel's neck. Okay, so the dress is gathered up at the top. I'm gonna move the seam around in the back and pull the gathers tight around the neck of the angel. So they'll be tight around the spool. My angel's dress looks great. And now I'm going to add a little sort of a collar or shawl around her neck. I've decided just to use this lace. It's, it's a scrap that I found and I chose it for the color because I want to have a nice contrast. But I could also have used this. I would have to open up the center a little bit and um, work it around like this. It looks kind of like a shawl. I also have something like this. But these options, the colors are too close to the white, so I decided to use this one. So I'll take my needle and thread, fold back the edge, and just gather up along the top straight edge. As I'm reaching the second end, I'm gonna fold that under. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have the folded ends in front or in back, but I wanna have options. I think this was about 18 to 24 inches of lace to begin with. Okay, I'm going to um, go ahead and complete the ring and gather these ends together and I'm gonna put the ends in the back. So like this, and then to connect it to this edge. This scrap happened to have four of these little motifs. And so I'm kind of having two in front and two in the back. Now I'm sort of distributing the fullness and I want to finish this neck edge by gathering up, this is about 24 inches of this 5 8 inch wide lace. I'm just gonna gather this up to make a small tight little collar right around her neck and that will conceal the, the raw edges of both of these pieces. I've gathered up this little collar and I'm going to place it around her neck and secure the ends together in the back.
That looks good. Now for her hair. I'm going to use this fluffy yarn. I think it's Angora. I haven't used it before, but I think it's going to work just great. I'll, I'll choose. Oh, look, here's a tag. Let's see what it is. 100% pure Angora made in France. I have two four by six index cards and I'm gonna wrap the, the long way. So I'll wrap from one end to the other end and back again. That looks like enough. And so now I will stitch with my sewing machine. I have my trusty sewing machine here. Here I will stitch across and back across the center to secure all these loops. I pulled the, I stitched across and I pulled the card out and this is what my little wig looks like. So I'm going to apply some hot glue across the top of her head, like where a hairband would go. And then I'm gonna press the center um, stitching right into that glue. So here's my glue. And then the center of this little bundle, the stitched line goes right into that glue. Then I will continue with the hot glue from right about where her ear is and then down around to the back of her neck. There we go. There's one side. That might be a little hard to see. I'll, I'll try to be more evident on this side. So I'm going to apply the line of hot glue from here, which is the side of the head. See, there's her eye, so kind of where her ear would be. From here and then around to the very low back of her neck. Like this. Like that. And I'm going to press the stitched part into the glue, kind of hold it to secure so that it looks like this. Then I'm going to draw it up and I will, with the double strand of quilting thread, I'm going to tie it off into a top knot on the top of her head. So I draw this up and then here's my doubled strand of quilt thread. I'm going to wrap it around a couple of times and then tie it off. I'll tie it over one eye. Kind of not right in the center, a little bit off center. Nice and tight. And then right over that knot, I'm going to add a little decoration, which I think will be this. This is just like a little sequined applique. It's kind of like a flower or something. You could use anything. You could use a button or a faux flower, some a vintage millinery, paper flowers, a little applique. And as long as we're working up here, let's make her halo. This is a uh, 20 gauge gold wire. This is about half a yard. Fold it in half and then form a circle. Yeah, this is way more than I need. And then create a stem like this. Shape this out into a circle. And then trim off until you want the halo to be taller than the hairstyle, or at least as tall as the hairstyle, so that it'll go in 
and kind of show above the top knot. So I'm going to apply some glue right here and then kind of press it into the center of the top knot. That's way high. Good. Okay, great. Now we have a couple of um, finishing touches. I've tied this bow from 1 16th inch ribbon. I started with about a yard and I'm going to glue it below her chin. I like these loops to be longer than her collar and then I like the streamers to be pretty long but not as long as her skirt. You can also sew this through the lace if you prefer. Now I'm going to further embellish this with a little accent over the bow. I have a couple of options here. If I want to add some color, I could add a little crocheted flower like this one or a little lace flower. These I really like. Here's a paper flower. That's nice. Here's a ribbon rose. This is great. And then this is something I pulled off an old hat. That's a millinery flower. It's a little big, but I could have put it up in her hair. That would have looked good. Maybe I'll save that for the next one. But anyway, I decided on this little thing. This is um, something for jewelry making. It's like a cabochon or something. It has no holes in it. It just has a little um, painted rose that kind of matches her lips. So I thought this would be good. I'm just gonna glue it on. I'll add some glue to the back. Just glue it on over the bow. And the little rose is over the bow and it's further securing it to the collar. And then I also have some of this ribbon on a needle. This is going to become the hanging loop. So I'm going to sew through the hair low, right up against her head so that it's nice and secure. Tie it off pretty high. I like to have a nice long hanging loop for any of my projects. Not too long, but you, know, you have more options. And then finally for her wings, I have some feather wings. Okay, this is seven and a half inches wide. And um, you can find these in the doll making supplies in your local craft store. Um, I've had these for a while, so I can't promise how hard or easy they are to find, but you can certainly find something similar. Also, if you do a search for um, feathered wings for doll making or something like that, they should come up in a search. And also, sometimes they sell these just as ornaments. They sell them with a hanging loop and you're supposed to hang them on your tree. But of course, we're going to use these as wings. So I'm going to apply some glue right here and then I'm going to press this onto the back of her head. Let's have a look. I'll hang her up on my bulletin board so that you can see her from head to toe. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.